Kathy Mead. Hi, everyone. My name is Kathy Mead. Um, as far as my background goes, I've been a registered dietitian for about 30 years and taught a variety of weight loss classes. Um, and I have a master's degree in public health, and I'll be doing turning this over now to Joy, our other dietitian. Here she is. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, my name is Joy Bakiber, and as you heard, I'm also a dietitian. I've been a dietitian for about 11 years, and um, Kathy and I are also certified lifestyle coaches and teach our Life Steps class here at uh, Lakeview. So I will get us kicked off with the webinar. Um, today we're going to talk about the current trends in weight loss and dieting, what we have found that really works for sustainable weight loss, weight loss programs we have available, um, including those offered at Lakeview and Westfield Hospital. And then, like Donna said, you'll also get the opportunity to send in your questions. As we know, America has a weight problem. 68 to 71%, pardon us, technical difficulties. There we go. 68 to 71% of Americans are overweight or obese. This is not just an issue we're seeing in adults, it's also affecting children and adolescents. 32% of children and adolescents are overweight and 17% are obese. This is concerning because being overweight and obese increases the risk for developing chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. But losing even as little as 5% of your body weight can reduce your risk for developing these diseases. What's contributing to our issue with weight in America? We are eating a lot more than we did 30 years ago. Portion sizes are larger, plates are larger, and food is available almost everywhere we go. It's estimated Americans are eating 500 more calories per day than they were in the 1980s. Eating an additional 500 calories daily above your calorie needs can lead to a one to two pound weight gain per week. With the onset of weight problems comes massive amounts of information on how to lose weight. We often find that information conflicts with evidence-based science and is not coming from a reputable source. With the advent of the internet and social media, it makes it ever more difficult to sift through what is fact and fiction. This leaves many of us confused on how to lose weight in a healthy way and for a sustained effect. We are also much more sedentary than we were before watching television, surfing the internet, streaming videos, and working at more desk-style jobs in front of computer screens. Technology has also increased convenience in our lives, leading us to be more sedentary. The less time we spend being active, the less calories we burn, leading to weight gain over time. Stress is very calm, and the ca causes are endless. Busier lifestyles are contributing to this. More parents are working. It's becoming a cultural norm to always be available. And technology, again, has also made it easier for us to stay connected to our jobs even after typical business hours. Unmanaged stress levels can change our body chemistry by altering cortisol levels, and stress can cause us to act in unhealthy ways like skipping activity and exercise and reaching for comfort foods that are often high in fat and sugar. Also contributing to the conflicting diet information are many of those restrictive diets. By restrictive diets, we mean diets that exclude certain food groups, are very low in calories, or hold the expectation that you are strictly to adhere to the principles of the diet with little room for flexibility. Here's a list of common fad or restrictive diets we hear about. Keto, Atkins, Paleo, Master Cleanse, Juice Cleanse, Raw Food Diet, Whole30, Duke and Diet, and nutritional supplements. <clears throat> U.S. News ranks diets every year based on four categories, short-term weight loss, long-term weight loss, easy to follow, and healthy. 
Most of the diets listed above ranked very low in all of these categories. And currently, there's no evidence-based supplement or pill that we know of that works for weight loss. So why don't these extreme diets work? They're restrictive, making it very difficult to follow. They're expensive. Many of these diets can be costly with the expectation that you buy their food or pay into an expensive program. They can trigger overeating. With restrictive type dieting, diet backlash occurs where even the thought of a forbidden food is enough to trigger overeating. They're not practical. Long term, to purchase the special foods and spend a lot of money, these diets don't seem sustainable. It can affect your social life as well if you're not able to attend gatherings that don't serve the diet food. They can cause more harm than good. Behaviors like limiting or cutting out certain foods can also cause psychological damage. As soon as you tell yourself you can't have something, it becomes impossible to stop thinking about it. The more you try to not eat a certain food, the more likely you are to overeat once you have access to them, since you don't know when you'll be able to eat them again. The cycle continues, food or calorie restriction, followed by deprivation, which causes overeating, and then guilt. Sorry about that. These diets also tend to cause you to gain more weight back than you had originally lost. With every attempt to diet, the rate of weight loss slows. This is why you might find that the weight comes off easily during the first diet, but subsequent attempts do not have the same results. Over time, chronic dieting can increase your set point weight range, and these biological responses kick in even if you are at a higher weight than usual. Restrictive diets also come with other side effects. Nutritional deficiencies are common with restrictive type dieting. When you restrict a food group, you're not obtaining all the nutrients from diet that you normally would. These deficiencies can lead to low energy, memory function suffers, and you are less able to focus. It can cause depression, anxiety, and irritability. It can lead to unhealthy hair and skin causes muscle breakdown, and it can affect your bone health because you're not getting as much calcium and vitamin D that you would need. Some of these restrictive diets can also affect our heart health, like the Atkins and Keto, uh, which is high in fat content. It can increase your cholesterol levels, and many of the diet foods that you're asked to replace your usual diet with are high in sodium, which can affect your blood pressure. These diets can also lead to dehydration. Excessive food restriction and excessive exercising can cause your fluid levels to drop. As mentioned before, these diets can also affect your weight cycle, causing you to uh, drop and gain. It can affect your metabolism long term because when we deprive ourselves of food, our body's metabolism slows down, and it can cause a lot of emotional stress. So what does work for successful weight loss? Research has shown that people with successful weight loss and long-term maintenance had four things in common. They ate breakfast, and eating breakfast can burn 5% more calories if you start out your day with a healthy meal. They ate balanced meals, and we'll go into balanced meals a little bit more on the next couple of slides. They monitored their activity and what they ate, um, so this is using journaling and online tracking, and we're also going to touch on this in a little bit. And they exercise 30 minutes most days of the week. We do recommend getting up to 150 minutes of exercise weekly, and again, we're going to touch on this a little bit more. <clears throat> so what else works? Other successful behaviors and habits we have found for weight loss include 
avoid skipping meals. You'll be less likely to overeat later. Getting adequate protein at meals and drinking plenty of fluids. This contributes to feeling fuller longer, which we'll also touch on a little bit more in some future slides. Drinking alcohol in moderation. Working on stress reduction. Improving your sleep. Do a self-check to evaluate if your eating is triggered by emotions. And getting support from a class, a registered dietitian, friend or family member who supports your weight loss goals. So this is what a balanced meal looks like when we talk about um, eating a balanced meal. So we see here that half of our plate is filled with veggies. These are non-starchy veggies, um, which we'll go over a little bit more what a starchy veggie is. So looking at half of your plate coming from foods like broccoli, salads, cucumbers, peppers, Um, and then a quarter of your plate should come from grains. Um, make half of your grains whole grains. Uh, whole grains, we're thinking things like brown rice, whole wheat pasta, whole wheat bread, quinoa. And then another quarter of your plate coming from your lean meat. So those are things like chicken without the skin, um, a lean steak, lean uh pork tenderloin, fish, things like that. And then there is room for milk with your meals, uh, but wanting to choose a skim milk or a 1% milk that's lower in fat content and less calories. Um, and then if you take a look at the size of the plate, that's just as important. Um, plates, this, plates these days are much larger than they used to be. So if you see that ruler at the bottom of the plate, we want that to be about nine inches versus those 12-inch plates. Um, and this plate is taken from the My Plate, uh, which is the new form of the food pyramid. About eight years ago, they discontinued the food pyramid and started the My Plate. So what's so great about the balanced meals? Well, getting that good serving of protein, that lean protein, is going to give you that staying power. It makes you feel fuller longer, and it helps with preventing blood glucose dropping after eating that leads to us to reach for that sugar. The fruits and vegetables and whole grains are packed with fiber. They help keep us fuller longer managing, and managing our hunger in between meals. Fiber also helps with that glucose drop after meals and improves our digestive health. Carbohydrates filling just a quarter of the plate again helps with normalizing insulin and blood sugar levels. Carbohydrates are part of a healthy diet and our body needs them. We don't need to restrict carbohydrates in our diet, we just need to keep an eye on those portion sizes. In addition to keeping us fuller longer, a balanced diet also provides us with vitamins and minerals our body needs to change our food into fuel. So let's put this into practice. Here is a picture of breakfast one and breakfast two. So the first breakfast, breakfast we have Cheerios, uh, one and a half cups of the Cheerios and a cup of milk. We've got a piece of toast with some jam and coffee. And breakfast two, we have two eggs, two pieces of toast, a cup of berries, a cup of milk, and a cup of coffee. Each picture or each meal has the same amount of carbohydrates, but breakfast two has more protein and it has more fiber. This is going to keep you feeling fuller for longer after you eat your breakfast meal. If you take a look at the graph over here at the bottom left of the picture, you can see how our blood glucose can spike a lot higher after eating a mostly carbohydrate breakfast versus uh, a lower spike in our blood sugar and a longer lasting effect with the breakfast that has the eggs and more fiber that's coming from our whole wheat toast and our berries.
All right. Lastly, before I hand the phone over to Kathy, we're going to talk a little bit about exercise and why that is helpful for weight loss. So the goal, which we won't start out with immediately, is aiming for 150 minutes of exercise per week. If we break that down, it's 30 minutes of exercise five times per week or around 20 minutes of exercise seven days a week. Exercise is beneficial for weight loss because it burns calories, but that's not the only benefit. It helps improve our sleep and mood, improves our balance and flexibility, can lower our blood pressure and cholesterol, and can lower our risk of heart attack. It helps with improving our stress levels and energy, and it contributes to muscle strength, which improves our metabolism. If you're just starting out, you want to increase the minutes you exercise by 5 to 10 minutes each day. Hi, this is Kathy Mead here, and um, what I'm going to be talking about is weight loss tracking and monitoring um, and moderation. So, studies show that self-monitoring, when self-monitoring um, and tracking your intake and exercise, people who do that are more successful in permanent lifestyle change and weight loss because of the fact if you track your intake, um, even if you cheat, you will eat less. So there are different ways that you can self-monitor and self-track. And the first one is like online community tracking for accountability or journaling. Um, many of the people I work with, they choose whether they want to do it electronically or if they want to do it in a, a three-ring binder or just writing it in a journal. Um, but just keeping track of your intake will, you will be more successful in um, eating less overall. Um, or you can use different um, app sites like MyFitnessPal, that is one that we use quite a bit in the class that I teach, or Spark People, or Fitbits. But Fitbits a lot of times um, are connected to MyFitnessPal or, um, you know, they have a, an app for that or Weight Watchers, but Weight Watchers has a fee of $4 to $11 per week. But I really believe in tracking. We have these great um, devices nowadays that can help us with tracking exercise as well as intake. Um, most of the people in my classes use a lot of trackers, and studies do show there's good results with them. Why not use these new devices? Um, they, I mean, for an example would be if I'm on a cycle and I'm cycling and I'm at 14.8 miles, you better believe I'll stay on that bike until I'm at 15. So I wouldn't know that if I hadn't used a tracker. So next we're going to talk a little bit about moderation. Um, starting here at moderation, the big thing that we emphasize in our program is moderation and that um, it's important to learn that there are foods that don't really offer us a lot of nutrients, that offer us, um, you know, don't offer us a lot of vitamins and minerals. And when we eat, we want to make sure we eat foods that give us a lot of things that help us, you know, fight off diseases and provide us with nutrients. But there, there goes to say, like Joy had mentioned, if we say no, we have a tendency to want those foods. So there's really no good food, bad food. Permanent lifestyle change is really about limiting certain foods. Um, in our class, we don't restrict, we just limit. So we want to limit sugar pop, um, sugary drinks, juices, limiting sugary treats, foods, uh, limiting fast foods, limiting breaded or fried foods, and limiting processed foods because really those foods don't give you a lot of nutrition. And um, you know what they say, the more sugar you have, the more sugar you want. It's kind of like brain chemistry. Um, our brain knows sugar, and the more we eat of sugar, the more we want. So we're really based on permanent lifestyle change, um, that everything in moderation So today I'm going to talk also, too, about the programs, different types of lifestyle change programs. 
um, and the programs we offer here at Lakeview and Westfield Hospitals. We want programs um, that focus on lifestyle change, not dieting, permanent lifestyle change. That would be Weight Watchers, the Mediterranean diet, therapeutic lifestyle change diets, the DASH diet, a registered dietitian. What to look for would be a registered dietitian or a licensed nutritionist, um, healthy weight for life, and lifestyle life steps to prevention and healthy weight. Those are some programs, if you've seen, that are um, focused mostly on lifestyle change, for permanent lifestyle change. Um, so you want to look for a registered dietitian or a licensed nutritionist. What they'll provide, can I skip the slide? Um, what will provide Just a little technical difficulty here. Here we go. Okay. So we have a Healthy Way for Life class and, um, and lifestyles prevention here at Lakeview and Westfield. We provide individual nutrition counseling, or these are the kind of programs you want to look for. In our program, we determine your calorie and protein needs. We also evaluate intake and give feedback. Um, we really stress tracking because it's very successful when you track food and exercise. An overall balanced diet with emphasis on whole grains, lean proteins, healthy fats, fruits and vegetables, protein and fiber at each meal, more whole foods, um, choose fresh over processed. And when I say whole foods, like whole fruits, whole vegetables, um, not a lot of processed foods. Moderation of saturated fat, sodium, sugar, and alcohol. We emphasize three meals a day, which, do, which includes important nutrients. Now, our first class that we offer at Lakefields and um, at Lakeview and Westfields is the Healthy Weight for Life class which is taught by a registered dietitian. This class um, is a shorter, it's short, it has small groups, a small group setting. Um, it is in three sessions within four weeks. This is for someone who can launch after the first three classes and continue to be successful on their own. The cost of this program is $75 for all three group sessions. So it's in a group session, it's facilitated by a registered dietitian, and there's only three sessions. It's offered monthly. How to get started, visit our website at www.healthpartnerslocalcare.org um, slash classes to find listings of up and coming dates and register for, for the series that will fit into your schedule. Or you can call 651-430 8715 and ask for Healthy Weight for Life and our location. Now, the class that Joy and I are health coaches for is called Life Steps to Prevention. This is our year-long class. And permanent lifestyle change, after all, is our eating, the way we eat is really a habit. Um, so it takes a year. We emphasize our emphasis is on structural lifestyle change with the goal of increasing activity, healthful eating, gradual weight loss, decreased risk of developing chronic diseases including diabetes and heart disease, and overall improved health. Now, um, our Life Steps, as I said, is a year-long program. The first 16 weeks are weekly consecutive sessions. They last four to five months. In those sessions, we talk about um, usually the sessions are small groups. Um, we have anywhere from five to ten members, and it's kind of like a support group. And it works first 16 weeks are consecutive. Then there's four bi-week sessions, which are two months. And then after that, five to six monthly sessions in five to six months. And this, 
program total is a year. It gives us time to face real-life situations and how to truly cope with change, change in behavior. And I tell the participants in this program that some of them worry, and I'm like, we've got a year. We've got a whole year to change these permanent and to permanent lifestyle habits. So our weekly sessions focus mainly on how to adapt or adopt a lifestyle that includes healthy eating and physical activity. You're learning skills, controlling your external environment, dealing with psychological and emotional aspects of eating, and our bi-weekly and monthly sessions assist us with transition. So in the first 16 weeks, um, there's a weight loss and changing a into permanent lifestyle change as well, eating and exercise. And then after that, we go to the bi-weekly and monthly sessions that help kind of ingrain those lifestyles or assist you with transition. Um, you have frequent contact with the support with our, the group that you're with, managing on your own also, and then we revisit themes. We stay motivated. Um, uh, we also... With our classes, we have recipes of the week. Um, we have cooking demonstrations, different products that I've brought in, different guest speakers. Physical therapy comes in and speaks to us and explains to us about exercise and gives a demonstration. So our life steps, to summarize, overall purpose, the main goal is to prevent type 2 diabetes prevention. Others interested in improving their overall health and managing chronic disease are welcome. So I've had participants lose weight, go off blood pressure medication, go down sizes, um, and, and change their overall habits in terms of eating and exercise. Usually the goal is to achieve and maintain a loss of 5 to 7% of initial body weight and coupled with achieving and maintaining at least 150 minutes of moderate physical activity per week. So we look at both, and it takes both. So to summarize, Life Steps Purpose, it addresses many challenges we face in adapting or adopting healthful lifestyle habits. What to eat, how to eat, how to overcome barriers to regular physical activity, managing stress and coping with behaviors. And as I said, it's a small group setting of 8 to 12 people in class. And ours at Westfields and Lakeview Hospital are facilitated by registered dietitians. Our expectations with Life Steps is it's a private weigh-in. We weigh in every, every session. Um, we develop, you develop your own weekly action plans. Every week we have an action plan. And then we really encourage self-monitoring and tracking, not only of food, but physical activity. And I explained why that, that's so important. People are more successful when they track both activity and intake. And then we have a non-judgmental atmosphere and support from people in the group as well as your lifestyle coach. So our cost for Life Steps, it was $300. It's $200 cost for the entire year. The total cost ends up being t cheaper than any other program. Um, the minimum is six to eight participants per group. We have two new sessions starting. We have a session starting June or January 23rd at Westfield Hospital and February 28th at Lakeview Hospital. If interested, call Diabetes and Nutrition at 651-430-8715. Why Good Nutrition Matters? Overall, lifestyle change. First, your food choices can influence heart disease, high blood pressure, certain cancers, diabetes, osteoporosis. So what, what we do also, too, is we evaluate 
fad diets carefully. And Joy had mentioned some of those fad diets that are, I mean, if it were really simple, we would be rich women. Millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> so malnutrition and nutrient deficiencies can directly affect your mental health as well as anxiety, depression, your energy and focus, healthy hair and skin, strong muscles, strength, stamina, bone health, healthy digestion. So now we'll go to the question part of our presentation. So any questions, I guess, you would type them in now. The chat feature is where you can type in any questions. We don't have any yet, so we'll just hold on and see if anyone has questions. And if not, we'll close out, but we'll just hang on for a minute or two, give you a chance. Okay, our first question is, I'm a vegetarian. What types of protein choices do you recommend? Well, being a vegetarian, we would recommend plant-based protein, and it would depend also on the type of vegetarian you are. Um, if you're a vegan, um, you know, we would basically recommend, you know, whole proteins, plant-based proteins, um, you know, beans, lentils tofu, um, nuts, seeds, that kind of thing. We do have some vegetarians who participate in our program, but protein is very, very important. And the, the cool thing is, is that in our program, what Joy and I do is we determined your nutrition needs in terms of your height, your weight, your age, and your activity level. And what we would do as dietitians, is we would determine how many grams of protein you would need in a day. And that way, when we set up, when you start tracking, we would look at your food intake and we would recommend things individually for you as a vegetarian. Um, we would see what you're eating and we would total the grams of protein and then we would compare that to what we would recommend you need daily and evaluate evaluate it based on that. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. Our next question. What about milk? I've heard milk really isn't good or necessary for human adults. What are your thoughts? Okay. We need three servings from the milk group a day. Calcium is a mineral that is not made in our bodies. And we need calcium for muscle function as well as our hearts to contract and our muscles to work. And if we don't get the calcium we need from an outside source, our bodies will use our bones and teeth, the calcium from that, to meet those needs and therefore your bones are weak become your bones become weak and can break easily. And that's kind of an osteoporosis thing. So whatever age level, teenagers from ages five, uh, 15 to 25 need at least three to four servings um, because their skeleton mass is doubling. We do not add bone mass on after age 25. So it's really important to get our needs met through an outside source. And I think it's eight cups of broccoli equal one cup from the milk group. And when we're saying milk, milk... Uh, a cup of milk, a cup of yogurt, and I think it is like a cheese stick. That equals the amount of servings you would need a day from the milk group. Or you could have three cheese sticks or three yogurts. But yogurt has the most amount of calcium. It is 444 milligrams per cup versus 
milk has about 333. So I hope that answered your question. Uh, thanks for the questions. We haven't seen any more come in, so we're going to close out. I, we recorded this webinar, and this will be sent out to you in an email either later today or tomorrow. And I want to thank you all for joining us. Bye now. <laughs>